Have you ever opened up ChatGPT, typed something in to get something done, and then thought, mm, yeah, that's fine for an output, but fine isn't gonna change your business. Most people use AI like a vending machine, typing something in, hoping something good comes out, and then settle for whatever it gives you. But AI is more like a mirror. It reflects the clarity, the context, and the creativity that you bring to it. And when you learn to talk to it differently, it starts thinking with you, not for you. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you five fundamentals that turn AI from a tool into a teammate for you, one that can save you hours, make you more money in your business and actually move your business forward. And the first fundamental is to be ridiculously specific with your prompt. Vague prompts are gonna give you vague results, period. You need to be able to clearly articulate what it is that you want. You need to be able to think through exactly what you want and to be able to describe it. The format, the length, the structure. Here's what I mean. Here is a bad prompt. Write a social media post about AI automation. That's it. That's what most people do and they want wonder why they get generic as the term is now AI slop, right? A good prompt, on the other hand, write a LinkedIn post, 200, 250 words, explain how AI workflow automation helps coaching, include one specific tool, a before after scenario, blah, blah, blah. I'm being very, very specific in what I want the output to include with my prompt. See the difference there? Same basic as completely different level of specificity. Now here's why this works. Constraints give the AI a clear target. When you're specific about what you want, the model has less ambiguity to navigate and can generate outputs that actually match what your needs are, what your wants are. Now, let's see these two prompts in action. So write a social media post about AI automation. Let's see what that gives us. And then the more specific prompt, let's see the difference there. All right, here's the response from the overly simplistic, not a great prompt. It's kind of a general response and it's because it's lacking the specificity within the prompt. Now, if you flip over to the other response here, the more specific prompt, this is, I like this because because now we're talking to a very specific audience because I've given that within the prompt here. Most coaches I talk to are drowning in admin work, client onboarding, et cetera, et cetera. I like the before and after. It describes the workflow in relay.app, which is a tool that I gave it to include in the output here. Time saved, the best part. And then I like the bottom here, question for you. As you can see here, a much more thought out response because of the level of specificity that I included in the prompt itself. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Rick Mulready. And for the past 11, almost 12 years now, I've run a seven figure online business helping other online business owners grow and scale their business. For the past two and a half years, I've run an AI community called the AI Playbook, where I help online businesses leverage AI so that you can streamline your business, cut a bunch of hours in your work week, and use AI to increase profit and make more money in your business. If you are interested in joining us inside the AI Playbook, I'll link to it in the description below. Okay, prompting fundamental number two is context is queen. Give context in your prompt so that the AI isn't left guessing. The AI doesn't know your business out of the box, your audience, your constraints, or what your business goals are. You have to tell it, or it'll just make up random context that doesn't fit your situation. If you're asking it to analyze a report, well, you have to give it that report. So again, let's look at a bad prompt with no context, like write a sales email for my membership. No context, no nothing added to it. It's just not a very good prompt at all. Compared to write a sales email, email for the AI playbook membership with the goal of, so you give it the goal and then you let the AI know, again, context, your audience, what the offer is, the voice, the length. Now the AI has everything it needs to write something that actually sounds like me and speaks to my specific audience and speaks to the goal that I'm trying to achieve with this specific sales email request. Context helps the AI make smart decisions about tone, examples, depth. Without it, you get generic outputs that sound like everyone else. Okay, I've just run both of these prompts. So the write a sales email for my membership. Notice the response that Claude comes back with. It's smart enough to be like, hey, I don't have any context whatsoever. It's asking me five follow-up questions. So I have to go through and answer these questions when in the other prompt, I was way more specific with the context and it wrote me a really good email without having to ask me five follow-up questions. So again, it's because of the level of context that I included in the prompt. For the third prompting fundamental in my framework, it's a concept called few shot prompting. It's essentially showing the AI 
instead of just telling it. AI absolutely loves examples of whatever it is that you want. Instead of describing your style in like abstract terms, like be engaging, create curiosity, just show the AI exactly what good looks like. This is hands down one of the most underused techniques and it is insanely effective in getting way, way, way better output from AI. Okay, let's go back to an example of a bad prompt when it comes to showing, not telling. Write email subject lines that are engaging and create curiosity. Engaging and curiosity mean different things to different people. You're making the AI and try to interpret whatever it is your vibe is that you're going for here versus a much better prompt that includes few shot prompting. Here's what I mean. Write three email subject lines for my AI newsletter. Use this style. Example one, example two, example three. Now write three new ones about clients onboarding automation. Again, it's like showing instead of telling. Way more effective. The AI can pattern match to your examples instead of guessing what like engaging means from that really bad version of the prompt. So let's see the output that we get from the few shot prompting structure, the show don't tell, and the other really bad prompt. Let's see what it gives us here. Okay, the first thing you'll notice here is you'll get a way faster response with the structure that includes the few shot prompting. So here are the three subject lines and and they each model the examples that we gave it in the prompt. And then it gives you a nice explanation. The other one here, it doesn't even, hasn't even given me an answer yet. I have to go back and answer all these questions in order for it to actually give me a helpful output. Prompting fundamental number four in my framework is structuring your prompt. When you explicitly define the output format that you want, the AI is gonna follow it. Requesting specific structure like bullet points or sections or numbered lists gives you organized scannable results instead of like a big dense paragraph or a bunch of dense paragraphs. So an example of a poor prompt for this would be this right here. Analyze this YouTube script and tell me what's working, what, what needs improvement and the biggest opportunity. Now notice the difference with this prompt here. Analyze this YouTube script and provide feedback in this format. Strengths, areas to improve, one big win, keep total responses under 200 words. And then for each of these, I'm telling it what I want from each one. So for example, three bullet points of strengths, three areas to improve. For this prompt here, it'll give you maybe a paragraph or two, and you're gonna have to dig through it to find the useful parts. For the more structured prompt like this one, it's gonna give you scannable, usable results. No more digging through paragraphs to find the actionable insights that you really want. You get exactly what you ask for, organized exactly how you need it. Prompting fundamental number five of my framework is what I like to call prompt iteration. Stop trying to write the perfect prompt on the first attempt. You're not gonna do it. I don't, nobody does that. Start with good enough then refine based on the output that you get, right? Once it gives you an output, go back and forth with it, have a conversation, tell it what you like, tell it what you don't like, ask it to change specific things until you get to an output that you're really happy with. And here's an advanced prompt iteration technique that I like to use pretty much all the time. Ask the AI to write its own response. So for example, you can say, rate your previous response on a scale of one to 10 for clarity, actionability, and tone match, where 10 is the absolute best. Then rewrite it as a 10 out of 10. Or another way to use this concept with ChatGPT, for example, is to say, create your own definition of excellence for this type of content, your internal rubric, grade your output against that rubric, then iterate internally until you achieve a perfect score. So now you're telling the AI to create its own scoring rubric, grade itself against whatever it comes up with, and then iterate internally until it gets to whatever the perfect score that it is created within that rubric. So remember the best prompters aren't the ones who nail it the first try. They're the ones who iterate efficiently and get comfortable with refining based on the types of outputs that the AI is giving them. Let's recap the five fundamentals that we talked about. Number one, be ridiculously specific. Number two, give context to the AI so that it's not guessing what it is that you want. The third one is multi-shot prompting or few shot prompting. This is where we show don't tell by using examples of what good looks like. Number four, structuring your request, structuring the prompt itself. And then number five, we just talked about iterating on your prompt. So let's look at how these five fundamentals are represented in this example prompt here. So I put together a hypothetical prompt for writing a new sales page for my AI playbook community. So the first thing you're gonna notice is the getting ridiculously specific, the specificity of the prompt itself. You're gonna notice that within the top three sections, role and context, task description, 
and the specificity and constraints. So for example, I'm telling it, you're a direct response copywriter specializing in membership sites, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm giving it six specific instructions for the different sections that I want it to include in the sales page. And then I'm giving it additional specificity and constraints, the tone and style, the structure, what to avoid, what to include. And then as we move down into the prompt, now this is where we get into the few shot prompting or the multi-shot prompting where we're showing not telling. So we're giving examples, good example, bad example. Then I give it my brand guidelines and my audience insights. This is the context. And then at the bottom of the prompt, I've just included sort of a bonus section here. This is a chain of thought section where I'm giving it specific things I wanted to think about before writing the sales page for me. And then finally, remember we talked about structuring your prompt. And you'll notice here, each of these sections is clearly differentiated from section to section to section. And you'll notice that I'm putting these sections within what they call XML tag. So what I'm doing is I'm telling the AI model that's the beginning of a section and ending of a section so that we're not just giving it one just big massive block of text. All right, so those five fundamentals of prompting are gonna pretty much work across all models and are gonna give you great output. But here's what most people don't know. GPT-5 and Claude Sonnet 4.5 are built differently. GPT-5 is actually not just one model. It's a system with three different parts here. So as you can see here, instant, which is gonna give you instant answers right away. A reasoning model. This is the deeper thinking model for complex problems and a thinking mini. So it's still gonna think for the more complex problems, but it's gonna do it in a much quicker way. Now, auto is your router. So if you have auto chosen and then you type in your request, whatever it is that you wanna do, GPT router is gonna route it to whichever model it thinks would be best used to answer your specific request. Now over with Claude, with Sonnet 4.5 and, and Haiku 4.5, it's a more traditional, architecture. It doesn't have that built-in automatic reasoning system like GPT-5. You actually have to turn it on here and you can do it by the, like the little clock. So when you click that or mouse over it, you're turning on the extended thinking. So when you're working with these deeper or extended thinking models, you're going to need to prompt them slightly differently for the more complex task. So for example, in ChatGPT-5 with the thinking mode enabled, you still absolutely need to focus on specificity because the GPT-5 thinking model is very very, very good at following instructions. You also wanna focus on the structure and providing the proper context. Again, same things we've been talking about. So here's what a prompt leveraging the thinking model might look like. You're a seasoned marketing strategist for online businesses with an expertise in increasing MRR. I'm being very specific with the role and then also with the goal. Create a detailed 90 day marketing strategy for my business with the goal of increasing MRR. And then I give it the context very explicitly and the deliverable. And then you can step right into the fifth step of my prompting fundamentals of iterating on the prompt. So once you get the output, that the deeper thinking model gives you, then you can just go back and forth with it, further refining the output that it gives you. Okay, now that we've talked about the fundamentals of prompting for just the normal chats and either ChatGPT or Claude, for example, we've got to talk about prompting for AI agents. And this is where most people mess things up. When you're chatting with ChatGPT or Claude, you're right there. You can clarify, you can ask it to iterate, you can course correct sort of in real time. But with agents, they're running autonomously. They make decisions without you. They need to handle edge cases that you maybe haven't even thought of. And that requires a completely different prompting structure. So this is the three part agent prompt structure that I recommend. Part one, you wanna define the role and the objective of the agent. This is basically like the who and the why. You need to tell the agent exactly what it is and what it's trying to accomplish at a high level. So for example, you are a client onboarding specialist for an AI coaching business. Your objective is to successfully onboard new clients from payment to first session, ensuring that they feel prepared, excited, and very clear on next steps. So why does this matter? Well, agents need to understand their identity and the ultimate goal to make good autonomous decisions. When something unexpected happens, they're going to refer back to the objective that you've given them to decide what to do. Part two of writing good agent prompts is spelling out the operating instructions, if you will. This is the how. This is the process, the decision rules, the guardrails. So for example, for process, send welcome email immediately after payment confirmation. Wait 24 hours, then check if they booked onboarding call. Number three, if not booked, if booked, after call. I'm giving a very specific set of process instructions. 
Then for decision rules, if client doesn't respond, so it's sort of like I'm telling them if this, then that. And then finally, for the constraints, all emails must match my casual, friendly tone, never make promises about specific outcomes, always include clear single call to action, et cetera. So again, why this matters, without explicit decision rules, agents might guess. You don't want them to guess because they might guess wrong. You need to tell them exactly what to do in each scenario. And then in part three of our agent prompting, this is where we wanna give context and resources to the agent. This is the what. Give the agent everything that it needs to operate in order to accomplish the goal that you've given it in step one of the prompt. So for example, maybe it's email templates or calendar booking link or pre-call questionnaire, whatever an email address is for escalation contact. And then again, be even more specific with the common scenarios that it might come up against. Client booked, but hasn't completed questionnaire. Send friendly reminder with the direct link. So we're telling the AI agent how to use the resources that we're giving it access to. So again, this is super important because agents can't ask you questions mid task. They need access to everything up front every resource, every edge case, every example that they might need, you're gonna to wanna to put it within the prompt for the agent. If you don't know how to prompt, even after watching this video and you're like, I don't even wanna do any of this, just ask the AI model and tell it, I'm not really sure how to prompt you to get this specific output write me the prompt to get this specific output for me. And it'll write the prompt for you. Maybe you see an email from somebody that they've written and you love the style and you love whatever it is about the format. Well, copy that email and put it in the cloud and say, I want my emails to follow the same sort of structure and format that this email does. And then give it the example of the email. You're not telling it to copy it exactly. You're not telling it to copy word for word or anything like that. Be very specific with your output and then ask it to write the prompt that will produce that output for you. So you're reverse engineering the prompt instructions to give to the AI to get you the specific output that you're looking for. Another example of this, let's just say that you see an image online or a chart online and you're like, I wanna be able to produce images that are similar to that or a chart like that for my business. And let's just say I love the style of this image here with this train sort of at the edge of a cliff. So what I can do is I can take a screenshot of this image here and I can reverse engineer what the prompt would be to get to that image. So I could say, write me a prompt for an AI image generation model that would produce the attached image. And then I can just paste that image there. And just like that, ChatGPT is giving me this one line slash copy paste prompt. We're merely looking at an image and we're reverse engineering the type of things that we would need to include in a prompt to be able to reproduce that type of work. Similarly, we can ask AI what's wrong with the prompt that we've given it. Instead of just clicking go, we can say, act as a world-class AI prompt engineer. Please analyze the below prompt and rewrite it to the very best of your ability to get the best output possible. It's telling me the exact information it needs in order to write a really, really good prompt for what it is that I'm looking for. So there you have it. When you implement these basics of prompting that I've taken you through here today, you're gonna to be in the top 1% of businesses using AI and getting the best outputs possible that are most helpful to you and your business. Again, if you're an online business owner, you're looking to leverage AI in your business so that you can streamline your business, become more efficient, increase profitability and revenue in your business in the process using AI. I wanna invite you to join me inside my AI playbook community. I'll link to it in the description below. As always, thanks so much for watching today's video. See you in the next one.